Yeah, that was a very interesting talk about the red shirts in Chiang Mai, and it leads us well into our next next discussion. Um, Ajun Song Chai, would you like to begin? Thank you. I have no PowerPoint, so I will read out my main points. Uh, my paper will explain the emergence of the red shirt in the countryside of Isan through, the, uh, through rural transformations. I believe that red shirt is a manifestation of structural changes caused by socio-economic and political change that have taken place in rural area for decades. These changes gradually transform a peasant society to a, pe a post-peasant society. In this sense, the rural Richard is a political force emerging from historical transformations. I believe that we cannot fully grasp the nature and dynamics of the Richard if we base our analysis on individual conflict. For example, the Red Church is a uh, product of toxin versus P or B. In my view, individual conflict surely play an important role in the formation of the Red Church, but it is not sufficient for uh, the explanation of the extent of popular involvement and the uh, resident of the movement. I also disagree with the idea that the Red Church is a movement of the so-called new middle class or the lower middle class. For me, this kind of idea represents a middle class bias in disguise <laughs> because you are middle class. so. Uh, you fight for democracy. If you are the poor, you tend to be fell into the uh, petrochrist relationship, that sort of thing. Uh, this kind of thinking is not quite right because the middle class does not always fight for democracy and more than often they support the dictatorial, dictatorial rule. In addition, such thinking overlook class differentiation in the present day countryside. Rural transformation do not lead to the emergence of a single class, that is the middle class, but it lead to more complex class structure in rural communities. As my title suggests, I analyze the emergence of the rural red shirt via the concept of post-peasant society. So first, what is a post-peasant society? According to Michael Kearney, a post-peasant society can be characterized as non-modern and non-traditional society. A post-peasant society led to the end of local biotic communities. They have become components within greater communities. A post-peasant society is a socially unbound and composed of various kinds of social and communication networks. Traditional face-to-face -face communication is augmented by electronic communication and other media. Those communication networks channel not only the flow of information, but also of values to the countryside. The changing nature of rural society inevitably affected the identity of its member and their politics. In terms of politics, post peasant political struggle differ from that of peasants. Why prototypical peasant politics mainly revolve around land rights? Post-peasant engage 
in various issues, ranging from other occurring issues such as crop insurance, irrigation, to non occurring issues such as debt, rural fund, or wages. Uh, I will apply Kenny's concept of post patient to my case study. But why Kenan use the concept to study transnational migrants in a globalized world? I focus on rural transform transformation within a national boundary. Uh, let me now turn to my detailed analysis of uh, rural transformation in Isan. I divide the transformation into two periods. The first period is a transitional period. Uh, the transition from uh, uh, peasant society to post peasant society, which cover the period after the uh, Second World War to the 1970. Uh, when I use the word transition, I mean the process is gradual. Transition means the gradual integration of uh, uh, to the market economy of rural subsistence economy. But such transformation were uneven and complex. The degree of integration varied from place to place. Uh, but in the big picture or generally, the main feature of Isan rural society in this period is as follows. Farmers relying on uh, family labor engaged in uh, sticky rice farming for their subsistence needs grew a small variety of cash crops and were involved in a limited amount of non-farm work to supplement their incomes. This is the main feature of uh, is a rural society during the transitional period. Uh, the second period covered the, the period that uh, we see the emergence of the post peasant society, which covered the period from 1980 to uh, the present time. Uh, the emergence of uh, uh, post peasant society in Isan was marked by the in increasing uh, engagement in non-farm economic activities inside and outside the village. From the 1990s onward, rural households earn more income from non-farm economic activities than from agriculture. In agriculture, commercialization of agriculture initiated in the previous period was intensified by the expansion of upland crops and commercial paddy farming. Uh, apart from economic uh, uh, transformations, post peasant society also marked by the introduction of electricity to the rural area. In 1988, three in four of Isan households had electricity, and in 2002, almost all households in the region had electricity. Uh, the availability of electricity in Isan countryside is a landmark of the new period of social transformation in the region. It transformed village life clearly in the term of lifestyles, pattern of consumption, and taste. Moreover, villagers can follow national news and observe urban life directly from their home via TV programs. Uh, I will use the case of Pornbok Village to illustrate my point. Pornbok Village is a village in Sukhonokon province. This village has uh, 226 households. Most of them go rice for consumption, but 
a significant portion of rice was sold in the market. Apart from uh, paddy farming, villagers engage in other kinds of commercial agriculture, such as rubber plantation, vegetable growing, tobacco cultivation, fishing, or livestock. This is show the uh, diversification of the, the the agricultural sector in in uh, rural area, and the increase important uh, of uh, commercial farming. But if we look at the occupation in the village, we will see that okay, there are farmers, but we also see other occupation like uh, public and private uh, work in public and private sector like uh, there are local politicians local political uh, uh, local government officials or street vendor contractor price trader or worker so if we look inside the village we find a lot of people who who work outside the farm Village also has a variety uh, kind of business such, such as rice mill, car repair shop, grocery, small restaurant, uh, beauty salon. <coughs> <coughs> so outside the village, Pornbok villagers work in 16 provinces. Abroad, they work in Laos, Malaysia, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Japan, and the Netherlands. In terms of social change, Pornbok experienced significant change in many respects and resulted in increasingly blurred distinction between village life and that of the urban center. Cars and motorcycles have replaced traditional way of travels. Villagers own 26 cars and some 200 motorcycles. They also own watching machine, uh, refrigerators, CD and karaoke players. The latest technologies that have reached the village are the mobile phone and the internet. In my opinion, the economic and social changes in Phonebook are a microsome of the rural transformation that have led to the demise of the peasant society. Uh, at this uh, point, I want to uh, discuss the rural transformation, the impact of rural transformation on uh, class structure. If we look at the case of Pornbo, we will see that rural transformation led to layers of differentiation among rural populations. At the upper, at the upper end, a group of new entrepreneurs, for example, people who run a rice mill or uh, uh, contractors from a new rich in the village. At the lower end, they are wage earners. Between the two ends are farmers who own different sizes of lands. Because of this evidence, I I'm, I'm disagree with the idea that the rural population in Thailand can now be described as uh, middle income peasantry. Okay, let's look at the implication of uh, rural transformation for the racial mobilization. The change, the transformation that I discussed above, I think has uh, significant implication uh, on the racial mobilization as follows. First, because of rural transformation led to class differentiation as shown above. Political base of the racial come from the rich, the poor, as well as the middle classes. 
So I don't see the ratio that the movement of one class, but a movement of uh, the combination of classes. Uh, two, rural transformation undermine the centrality of uh, the village to villagers. Working and living in uh, the outside world enable villagers to develop a sense of individualism. In addition, it also undermines the authority of the village headman. The town village interactions and the spread of communication technologies enables rural population to learn about the outside world. As a result, villages are not blind to what is happening in society. For town village interactions and the spread of technologies also led to the disintegration of the traditional culture and held to nurture new values and norms within the countryside. The erosion of traditional norms and values enabled Isan villages to cross the forbidden lines of the old time. The implication of such transformation to politics is that it facilitated the reception of new political idea when democratization was introduced into rural Isan. Um, I think if we look at if we look at the Richard movement, soci social economic change is also important. But another factor that I think very very important to the formation of the Richard in rural Isan is democratization. Without democratization, I don't think that we will see a, a, a kind of the red shirt that we see now. Uh, the so-called democratization actually started in uh, 1979, or roughly in the 80s, which is uh, happened in the same time as uh, the, the, the process of uh, transformation from uh, peasant society to post-peasant society. I think the most important political change in Thailand happened between 1979 to 2006. In the span of 27 years, from 1979 up to uh, 2006 coup, Thailand was ruled by a coup appointed government only during 1991 and 1992. Apart from that, we have some sorts of democratization. Sometimes we have semi-democracy, sometimes we have representative democracy. But three things that's important in this period that I want to mention. This, within this period, first, Thailand has prime ministerial degree, 66, uh, 23, during the PEM government. This degree uh, stopped the political violence in rural area, gradually stopped political violence in rural area, which is I think it's, it's before uh, the 80 in rural area of Thailand, we have an armed struggle of the Communist Party. And then the government sent troops into the village and arrested farmers or killed them, tortured them. That's going on for two or three decades. But after the introduction of in Thailand we call Hoksipok Tap Song Sam. Political related violence committed by the, the, the state in rural area was gradually decreased. And then 
follow uh, after that we see the farmers movement the small scale farmer, the root, uh, assembly of the pool. And finally, we see the Richard. Uh, this is a sign of change in farmer psychology, I think. They show that uh, uh, Isan villagers has enough courage to change state when their interests were threatened. Uh, democratization in this period also led to decentralization. I think this is also important. We have decentralization. Uh, in 1994, Thailand have a uh, implementation of the Sub-District Administrative Organization Act, which took power from village headman and sub-district chief. Power uh, from the state was transferred to local politician, local election. So the result is it, uh, it created a new political network eroded state power from provincial level down to the village. We can state power open the way for popular mobiliz uh, mobilization. Thirdly, political experience under parliamentary democracy for nearly three decades help villagers to understand some basic principle of democracy. I think there's two things. First, one man, one vote. Everyone votes equal under the law, I think. The first one that villagers learn from this period. The second one is uh, the government have to come from election. Kudeta is illegal. This is what they learn. So, the effect of socio-economic change and political change or the democratization. I think the three factors contribute to the emergence of the red shirt in rural Isan. Thank you.